Right, this is a Leica CM1950 cryostat. It's a clinical grade, top of the range. We have uh, a suite of them within the core facility. It has additional safety features that are above the standard research grade cryostat. So I'll start off on the hand wheel first. You need to ensure that the hand wheel is locked at the apex. When it's locked at the apex, the hand wheel won't turn and motor stop is illuminated. When the hand wheel is stopped, then the head is fixed. That won't move. If you've got it off lock, and over the apex then the head will want to take your fingers towards the blade so for safety first it's always lock the hand wheel there are additional safety features in here as well that will come back to later on so i'm going to cover this top panel starting on the left hand side we've got vac which is a vacuum you can turn that on this increases the vacuum. It's an internal vacuum cleaner within the cryo chamber to help keep it tidy. That runs to a collecting bag and exhaust fire a HEPA filter. It's also on a timer, so it will switch itself off. Next up is PE, that's Peltier Effect. That's for these two cooling spots. That's on a timer as well. So that will send these two spots very cold and will turn itself off. That is independent, an independent chilling system to the rest of the cryostats. Next up, we've got plus or minus here for the cryo chamber. So that's all of the cryo stat chamber. And you can send that down to minus 35. Now the sensor is on the side here. And it will take a long time for the cryo chamber to drop down in temperature. You can see it's not moved any, even though we've set it down. The next cooling system is on the specimen head, which is this black thing here. And again, I can drop that down and that will go much cooler. And you can see the difference between the two in response. So you'll see this will start to drop down quite markedly, whereas the cryo chamber hasn't moved at all. If you wish the cryo chamber to be colder, you're going to have to come in in advance and pre chill it, or use some dry ice. So I don't want to work at minus 32, I'll warm that up to about minus 22. And I'll reset this to about minus 20. Next along is the clock and you can change the time on that. And Plus or minus is pretty explanatory. And then we've got a defrost setting. So that's what the little arrows for half a snowflake with some drips. So that's programmed for 2345 at night. Um, it doesn't defrost the whole chamber, it defrosts this top drill here.
This button with a full snowflake is a deep freeze button for that specimen head. I didn't press it because I don't want it to go into deep freeze mode. Next panel along, we've got another defrost, but this is a defrost for the head. So if you've got a load of frost build up on that, you can remove the frost and then it'll burn the water off and then it'll return it back down to minus 20 or whatever you set it at. Obviously, I'm not going to initiate a frost at the moment. Then we've got a light, the cryo chamber. And then we've got this symbol, which is for a key. Now that has higher service functions, but you don't consider it to be an on off switch. This is like a resurrection button. So if there's been a blip in power and it's obviously still alive, but not responsive, you can hold that button for five seconds and then it will wake back up. So you can actually lock your panel down. And that means everything's dead. So hold for five seconds and it comes back to life. I've done it. Yeah. Next along is UVC disinfection. So there's a dual lamp up the top here and you can press UVC and the UVC light will come on and there's a safety feature built in so that when you open the window it cuts the light off. The flashing light shows that the UVC disinfection cycle has been interrupted. Press it to cancel top one is half an hour the bottom one is one and a half hours so if you press and hold then you activate the one and a half hour disinfection cycle so now i'm going to cover the inside of the cryosat chamber just going to turn the lights on so you can see what i'm doing slide the window open there's a, an adjustable anti-roll plate. You can adjust it with that screw there. Blade guard, blade ejector. There's no blade in at the moment. This lever here is the blade clamp. I'll show you how to put the blade in. It acts on this vise. I'll just move this tool tray so you can see what I'm talking about here. There's a dovetail wedge. You can release this lever and that allows you to move the whole knife base backwards and forwards. You need about a centimetre down. is about right for most blocks. Clamp that up. On this side, you have a lever here. Loosen that lever. And that allows you to traverse and use different regions of the blade. I always start off using the right hand side and it's easier to put a blade in if it's over this way. So I'll clamp that up. back you can release this lever here and that allows you to adjust the head relative to the blade but you can actually feel it indexing where zero is leave it at zero and just clamp that over if that is starting to become loose, then you can adjust that 
tighten up this lever. Here we've got the specimen head. That's got a dovetail, a bit of OCT in there. So you've got a tooth there and that is operated by that lever. You can put your specimen into there. Take that out. You've also got a removable heat sink chill in the top of any specimen and some tools that are stored there so th these are the c35 type blades there's 20 in a pack and i'm going to eject one of those and insert it into the cryostat so if I put my finger on the diagonally opposite corner, it opens the jaw of that vise just a little bit, makes it easy. Finish it off with a paintbrush. If it comes up on one corner, you can use another paintbrush to make certain it's the same height. Don't touch the cutting edge, you'll damage it, even with a paintbrush, then clamp it up. So I'm going to apply some OCT to the specimen head objective. There's a variety of ways of doing this. You can flatten it and freeze it with this. will give you a good base to stick things onto. I'll show you how to attach um, something to that in a minute. Now this is a single sided razor blade and I've got cut resistant gloves on underneath these nitrile. So there we have a nice flat OCT that's attached well to the objective head. There are other ways of doing this. If you have a small specimen and you want to project it away from the aluminium head, you can use a cork disc. I soak them in water so that when they freeze they become more rigid. Put some OCT onto a stub on stub. We used to call them stubs. The previous design looked like a little mushroom or an EM stub. So you can attach that and that will lift any small specimen away from the aluminium as well. You can also use these to help freeze the edges. There's also coloured OCT available. So if you're dealing with little white bits of tissue, Commonly used is blue, but there are other colours available as well. And they provide a contrast to white bits of tissue. I'll just show you how that freezes through so you can see the difference between the two. So I'm just going to show you one way of attaching your specimen in OCT. Or it's frozen through, square it off, 
your OCT is starting to run out of one side just touch it stop it running that heat sink will take out any extra heat and help it freeze down so that's one way of attaching a tissue that's in an OCT mould I've got a piece of fixed kidney here, little mouse kidney. Put some OCT onto the cork. Not too much. You can see that's starting to freeze through from the bottom before it's frozen through. Insert it. So you can orientate it. So that's fixed tissues. Ideally you should be snap freezing these, but it's just to show you how you can orientate that. That could be an actual snap frozen piece of tissue that you're putting into your OCT anyway. So I'm just going to cover this panel on the left hand side now. Start with the grey buttons. So the grey buttons advance and retract the specimen head so the double arrows towards you that's course advance it's moving at its top speed now then you've got fine advance it is only working in microns you're barely going to see it fine retraction and coarse retraction. Now these three you have to keep your finger or thumb on to, to, for it to operate. This if you just press it once it will go all the way home that head. You don't want to work with it fully retracted. You want to work with it reasonably mid-range so that you've got some give and take with it according to your specimens. Come back to this, you've got trimming and sectioning, you can toggle between the two, you can change the thickness in microns, your trimming and sectioning, Routinely, you can do 10 microns sectioning and 30 microns trimming in, and you can change that as well. But there are common figures to section out. You may want to section thicker, you may want to section thinner. That's up to you. Now. This anti roll plate covers a range of 5 to 50 microns. We have one anti-roll plate for 50 microns and above and one anti-roll plate for 5 microns and below. Okay, so I'm going to trim this demonstration block in. Hand wheels locked. Orientate that. So I've exposed the blade and lower that block so the bottom of the block is just above the blade. That allows me to gauge the distance between block and blade. I can then advance it. Carefully pass the blade. It's one complete turn. So we're just hitting the top of the blade, top of the block, and I'm going to trim it in. So I'm going to change the trimming mode. And 
you can see we're working our way across that until we get a complete section. Take it off trimming and just polish it now. Smoothly cutting it gets rid of any imperfections in the surface. And 10 turns and the brush away. There's a collection tray down the bottom. Brush your rubbish into that. So you can see it's taking a section and it's curling up. I'm going to bring the anti roll plate back over and show you the, what happens when it's wrong. If it's too far advanced on the return stroke, it'll lift that anti roll plate. So I've locked that handrail. This anti-roll plate is too far forward. If that was a cutting stroke, it'd hit the glass before the blade, it'd damage your block, it'd damage your anti-roll plate. Here's the adjusting screw. I'm merely going to tighten this up. Too far the other way, probably. So I'll cut another section. Yeah, it's not lifted it. Now it looks like it's not cutting. That's because the anti-roll plate is too far this way. So I'll unscrew this bit by bit. And there's a spring here which pushes it forward. It's not a very strong spring. So you have to allow it some time to adjust. And then it gets to the point where you get flat sections. So the safest spot to pick the section up down at the bottom here. I'll just brush it flat. Onto the cold plate and I'll quickly pick it up. There you are. Get rid of that frost print. Get another section up here on the anti-roll plate. Let's take that off there by using the paintbrush. Again, I'm going to pick up finger down as a bat stop to stop it skidding and pick up. Here's another technique where you can freeze your slide down, works particularly well with the charged or sub slides. If you're having, if you've got tissue that's really difficult to pick up, say lung or skin, epidermis, and the epidermis isn't picking up on those previous techniques, you can move the whole section over to the slide brush it flat and then heat it from the bottom and it just drops everything onto the slide. So I've just trimmed in that kidney specimen just as an example. this up and I'll pick this up over the blade, detach it from the anti-roll plate. If 
Oh, I'm out. There's reception it gives me. So everything I've shown you has been in manual. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the motor drive. So for that the handwheel has to be off motor stop. It's in a continuous mode at the moment. This is your speed and then you can press both of these at the same time. And away it'll go in motor drive. So continuous. Change it to single. Okay. You can also trim in, so that has to be on continuous. And you can press Vmax. There's also a brake, an electric, electronic brake, and there's an emergency stop button. And that lights up this emergency stop. And you can take the emergency stop off by twist. So this is how to safely detach the specimen. So this works in reverse. This will heat your specimen holder, objective mount up from the rear. This is a solid blunt scalpel blade. And all we're going to do is use this as a pick. So that's taking the heat out of there, warming it up from the back. And if you have to use any force whatsoever, it's not been on for long enough. And all you're doing is picking it off quite simply. Turn it upside down so it'll freeze through. That's it, specimen detached. So I'm going to jet the blade, but I'm going to reuse the blade. I'm going to store it in a 15mm tube for reuse. That. Start the vacuum up. There's also a sharps disposal built into each knife box. Obviously, you can dispose of them into the yellow sharps bins as well. So, all I'm going to do now is spray the outside touch points. Spray up the benching in a minute. Light off and start the UVC disinfection cycle. That's it. 